Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Bible Adventures for Kids. Thank you for joining us today. Now, for today's agenda, we have not much of a change from other agendas. However, we'll review it anyway, then we'll get going. So, we are going to have a verse. We're going to learn a verse from the Bible. It is always good to learn a verse from the Word of God. Commit that verse to memory so we can recite it when we need it. So, we're going to learn a verse. Then we will have name that creature. I will give eight clues again, and you try and guess what the name or what this creature is. If you get the answer, yell it out loud so everyone can hear. So this is kind of a little bit of a competition. So if you get it first, yell it out loud. So we'll have a verse, we'll have a name this creature, and God is the greatest designer. We will talk about many different designs. Well, we'll pick one today and show how God is the greatest designer. And then we will have a lesson for the day. So we'll get started with our verse. Now I'm going to say the first part and then I would like you to repeat with me, to say it along with me. But today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I want you to use your finger. So I'm gonna get you to point your finger, put your finger up like this and get ready to use your finger. Okay, today is September 20th, 2020. 9 20 2020. So, finger up. Trust in the Lord. Finger pointing up. Trust in the Lord. So, we'll have actions to go along with this verse, and that may help us to remember it. So, with your finger pointing up, trust in the Lord. Repeat after with me. Trust in the Lord. And one more time. Trust in the Lord in the Lord. Finger still up. The second part will be with all your heart. With all your heart. Say it along with me. With all your heart. Now both of them together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Next part. And lean not on. We're going to wave our finger like this. Lean not on. Okay, say it with me. And lean not on. And lean not on. Let's do these three parts together. Finger up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on. And lean not on your own understanding. So you'll point to your head, to your mind, your own, your own understanding. So all together. Finger up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 in the New King James. So, everyone all together, finger up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. One more time. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. So now we're going to go all the boys and then we'll do the girls. You know what? We did the boys last time. Girls first. Girls first. Finger up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Okay, boys, join with me. Finger up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Okay, everybody all together. Everybody all together. Finger up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Very good verse. So now next time you use your finger, you'll remember the verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5. Okay, moving on. Name this creature. Okay, I need you to sit up nice and straight and get ready. Here comes the first clue. Name this creature. I start life in the water. 
Hmm. I start life in the water. So listen really closely to the clues. I start life in the water. Clue number two. I have legs but cannot walk. Hmm. Interesting. I start life in the water. I have legs but cannot walk. Clue number three. I'm not born with wings, but eventually I take to the skies. I'm not born with wings, but eventually I take to the skies. Clue number four. I have more wings than most creatures that fly. More wings. Hmm. I start life in the water. I have legs but cannot walk. I'm born with wings, but eventually I'm not born with wings, but eventually I take to the skies. I have more wings than most creatures that fly. What could this be? My wings flap 30 times per second, and I can fly up to 36 miles per hour. So it can actually fly pretty fast. Next clue. I am totally harmless to humans. I just like to check them out. So we have two, four, six clues so far. Two to go. What do you think it is? Number seven. I have two eyes. Each eye has 30,000 lenses. For us, we have two eyes, but we only have two lenses. This creature has two eyes, but each eye has 30,000 lenses. Let's do a review before we go to the last clue. Number one. I start life in the water. I have legs, but I cannot walk. I'm not born with wings, but eventually I take to the skies. I have more wings than most creatures that fly. My wings flap 30 times per second, and I can fly up to 36 miles per hour. I am totally harmless to humans. I just like to check them out. I have two eyes. Each eye has 30,000 lenses. And this is the final clue. Final clue. Are you ready? Final clue. In England, I am called a water dipper. In England, I'm called a water dipper. If you said, if you said the dragonfly, you would have been correct. The dragonfly, very interesting creature. So dragonflies are an aerial predatory insect. What that means, aerial means it flies. Predatory means it's a predator, it hunts. And it's an insect, it's a bug. So it's a flying, hunting bug. Dragonflies are an aerial predatory insect that eats flies, bees, beetles, moths, butterflies, and mosquitoes. They like to eat mosquitoes. There's more than 5,000 different types or different kinds of dragonflies. Most of their life is spent near fresh water. Their wings can be transparent, or that means see-through. You can see through them. Some of them can be see-through, but very strong. Their wings can be transparent, but very strong. God designed them with eyes that can see to the front, side, and even behind, all at the same time. And they can detect movement 40 feet away. So if something moves just a little bit, they can detect it up to 40 feet away, which is quite a ways away. They look dangerous, but they're actually harmless to humans. They look like they would probably give you a pretty good bite or a sting, but they're harmless. They hang around humans, they're just checking you out. Dragonflies have four wings. They have more wings than most animals that fly. But they can operate those four wings together or separately. Four wings, impressive. Now this was an article that I thought was very interesting with regard to dragonflies. It gave me a little more information. Um, it was done through the uh, smithsonianmagazine.com October 5th, 2011. There are more than 5,000 known species of dragonflies. Um, and then dragonflies catch their insect prey by grabbing it with their feet. They don't actually walk. They use their feet to catch their prey. 
and they are so efficient in their hunting, or they are so good at it, that one Harvard University study, they found that the dragonflies caught 90 to 95% of the prey released into their enclosure. They are very efficient, very good hunters. The flight of the dragonfly is so special that it has inspired engineers who dream of making robots or drones that fly like dragonflies. Dragonflies, which eat insects as adults, are a great control on the mosquito population. A single dragonfly can eat 30 to hundreds of mosquitoes in one day. Impressive. Some dragonflies migrate like birds and they go long distances. Scientists have tracked them. They put tiny transmitters on their wings. They've got to be pretty small. And they found that the green darner from New Jersey, they only travel every three days. But another type of dragonfly has been seen to travel 100 miles in one day. So they do travel. Now here is a dragonfly. Myths. FYI, for your information, a myth is a widely held but false belief or idea. So here's a couple myths when it comes to dragonflies. Some people say or they believe that dragonflies sting. According to this article uh, by Debbie Hadley, um, July 3rd, 2019 at thoughtsco.com says with regard to dragonflies stinging, nope, not even close to true. Dragonflies may look threatening to those entomophobes. Those are people that have a fear or dislike of insects, atomophobes. Dragonflies may look threatening to atomophobes amongst us, but there isn't a dragonfly known to man that has a sting apparatus. Dragonflies cannot sting you. That is a myth, a widely held but false belief or idea. Another myth, dragonflies live just one day. Some people believe they only live for one day. Dragonflies actually live for months or even years if you count their entire life cycle from egg to adult. Two myths. So I guess we are myth busters. We have solved the myths. The dragonfly. The dragonfly. I thought there were more dragonflies here. There's one. The dragonfly another part of God's amazing creation. They look dangerous, but they're actually harmless to us. God is the greatest designer. God is the greatest designer. I always seem to repeat this three times, so we'll do it one more. God is the greatest designer. Oh, I think we've already seen this slide. You know, when you're typing and you make a mistake, People call it a, a typo. You know, um, you might be wondering if this is a, a slido. I think I made a new word. Um, this is not a slido. This is on purpose because God is the greatest designer. Today we're going to talk about dragonflies. Dragonflies are excellent flyers. They are considered the best flyers in the insect world. Um, with four wings that you can fly, you can do independently, use two or four, um, they can fly pretty good. Man using God's design. Dragonflies have been studied for their flight abilities. Like I said, they're the best in the insect world. Igor Sikorsky is considered to be the father of helicopters. Igor Sikorsky studied dragonflies. And you can see here in this older picture where he first started developing, uh, designing helicopters. And then you can see in this new picture, which is the next one, the similarity between a Sikorsky helicopter and a dragonfly. Very, very similar. Igor Sikorsky, the father of helicopters, studied dragonflies. Many others have studied or are still studying dragonflies. Engineers at the University of Tennessee Space Institute are studying ways to design a fighter plane that can change directions as quickly and easily as dragonflies can. They're studying dragonflies. The American Association for the Advancement of Science, Dr. Wang says with regard to dragonflies, they are a marvel of engineering. 
I'd like to say it's a pretty good design by God. The Dragonfly, nature's colorful helicopter. Man using God's design. Dragonflies have been studied for their wing design. An article says dragonfly wings inspire micro wind turbine design. And that was by the Department of Turbulence Research in Germany. Then we also see an aerospace engineer in Japan. And then a biomechanics specialist in the University of Kansas. They're all studying the design of the wing of a dragonfly. God's design is still beyond what man can do. Man is doing lots of studying, but God's design is still beyond what they can do. God is the greatest designer. Dragonflies and helicopters, both, can fly forward, backward, sideways, and hover. All, both can. Pretty cool. However, dragonflies can also glide for 30 seconds. And they believe that it has to do with a part of the wing called the pterostigma that assists in gliding. So dragonflies and helicopters can fly forward, backward, sideways, and hover. But dragonflies can glide for up to 30 seconds. Helicopters don't glide at all. So let's, just for fun, do a little bit of a comparison here. We have man's design, which is the helicopter, and then we have God's design, the dragonfly. Let's do a little comparison. The largest helicopter has a propeller span of 99 feet. That, the propellers are what assisted in its flying. The propeller span is 99 feet, almost 100 feet, which is amazing. It's huge. A dragonfly, the largest dragonfly wingspan is about seven and a half inches. So man's design takes up 99 feet and God's design, uh, seven and a half inches. Let's do another comparison here. A pilot who flies a helicopter has two eyes and two lenses, like us. But a dragonfly has two eyes, but 60,000 lenses. And just to think of the size of a dragonfly to have 60,000 lenses, 30,000 in each eye, 30,000 of something in each eye. Incredible how small each lens has to be. This is a Chinook CH-47F, the largest and strongest helicopter. This helicopter can lift its own weight, and I think it's somewhere around 26,000 pounds. This helicopter is strong enough to lift its own weight. Actually, some of us can't even lift our own weight. This is a strong helicopter. When it comes to the Dragonfly, God's design, a dragonfly can lift 15 times its own weight. It's a little bit of weight, but it's 15 times. It's very strong. So if we were to make that into something we can understand, that would be the same as a 185-pound man carrying his Mini Cooper home. Incredibly strong. A dragonfly can lift 15 times its own weight. Impressive. The same as a 185-pound man carrying his car home. Tremendous. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11 in the Bible. Dragonflies are awesome, and God is the greatest designer. So for today's lesson, today's lesson, the topic that I want to touch on today is the topic of change. Now, I have a few things that I want to show you and tell you about how they have changed. So I want you to come up really close. I have a couple things to show you here. Okay, so the first thing is this. This is what is called a long play vinyl album. Um, back in my day, I guess, we called them LPs. This is an LP, long play vinyl record. And they were the way to listen to music since it was invented in 1948. So it's been around for quite a few years, over 70 years. Now, there was a change that took place. People went from listening to music 
on vinyl. And actually, vinyl is still used today. However, uh, another technology or another change came in, and people started using these. This is called an 8-track. This was developed in the 60s. An 8-track. Um, you won't see too many of these around anymore. This is really old technology. And also in the 60s, we had the development of this, which is called a cassette tape. And for those that are around my age, you know what a cassette tape is. Cassette tapes, from what I understood from one website, they said that they were introduced September 1963. So 57 years ago this month was the introduction of cassette tapes. So there was another change in technology. And then we went to compact discs or CDs. CDs, shiny on one side, writing on the other. Compact discs. So there was a change in how we listened to music. We went from the long play vinyl record, and we went from an eight track, and then to a cassette, and then the CDs, and now we have little small things with MP3 format that are so small, you can fit a thousand songs on something that fits in your hand. Amazing, lots of changes. There's also been changes in how we watch movies. This is a VHS. Anybody remember a VHS? Um, you'll have to ask your parents. They probably know about a VHS. This was changed, and so we went from VHS to DVDs. A lot better quality, a lot more information. There was a change made in how we watch movies. We went from VHS to DVDs. Now you can go on Netflix or different online streaming services. There's so many different things you can use now. People have home theaters in their home. There's been changes made. There's been changes made in how we listen to music. There's been changes made in how we watch movies. There's also been a change in even our money. This is, anybody know what this is? This is a loony. This change came, a loony, 24 years ago in 1996. Nope, 1987 for the loony, 33 years ago. It used to be this, paper bills. But we also have the toonie. The toonie used to be one of these. And you probably won't see too many of these around. So the toonie. 1996, 24 years ago. Loonies and toonies. So, there have been changes in how, in the three M's. Music, movies, money. There's been changes. Okay, check these out. We already checked them out. Things change in our lives all the time. There's always going to be things changing. So we have to accept that. Some people don't like change. But you know what? Not all change is bad, but things are going to change in our lives all the time. So, the way we listen to music, as we've already shown, has changed. The way we watch movies has changed. Even our money has changed. Lots and lots of changes. Here's a list of some other things that change. Seasons change. And we can see that right now because outside at night is getting cold. The season is changing. And I guess we go into fall, I think, next week. Seasons are changing. People change. You take a look at the calendar. The days change. There's many different things that change. Even things about you have changed over the years you will get taller. And I guess after you get to a certain age, you get taller, this, you get bigger this way, and then you get bigger this way. Change even happens to you. Your hair, the style, color, or even the amount may change. Where you live may change. 
Changes happen all the time. The coronavirus has changed a lot of things in this world. Social or physical distancing is a big change for all of us. You know, and they say that uh, people, uh, I don't know about you, but there's lots of people that are getting COVID fatigue. We're getting tired of the change. We've got to wear these masks all the time. We've got to stay away from people. Change. This changes how people work, how people shop. And for you, those of you that are in school, it has changed how you even do school. Change. Like I said already, change is not always bad. Not all change is bad. We can read in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10, a changed life in this man, Zacchaeus. Let's learn a little bit about him. It says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Verse 2, And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. He was a tax collector. He was somebody who collected money from people. And actually, he would rip people off. He would treat them poorly. And he was kind of a hated person. People didn't like this man, a publican, a tax collector, Zacchaeus. People didn't like him. Verse 3, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was. He knew Jesus was coming. He wanted to see him. And it says, and he could not for the press because he was little of stature. There was a whole bunch of people there. And he was a short man, so he couldn't, couldn't see. So, verse 4, he ran before, so ahead of the crowd, and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. So he knew that the crowd was coming in this direction. He ran and climbed up into a tree so that when the crowd got there, he could see who Jesus was. That's what he was doing. So, verse 5, and when Jesus came to the place where he was, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus. Make haste, or hurry up, and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Zacchaeus, come down, hurry, I'm coming to your place. Verse 6, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, the crowd, when they saw this, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Jesus is going to spend time with Zacchaeus, the tax collector, He's hated by everyone. He's a sinner. And verse 8, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. I give him back four times as much. Verse 9, And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus is the Son of Man. And he's saying that the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So whenever we read events in the Bible, there's a reason. God has something for us to learn. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4 says, For whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning. So there's something here for us to learn with regard to Zacchaeus, a changed life. What we learn, first of all, Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, and he wasn't going to let anything stop him. Verse 4 says he climbed up into a tree. He wanted to see Jesus. We also learn, Jesus came to where he was, in verse 5, and called him by name. You know, that's interesting because Jesus has come to where we are. December 25th, millions of people around the world will celebrate the birth of Jesus. He came to where we are. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Jesus came to where he was. And called him by name. Jesus has come to where we are. He obeyed Jesus' command to come out of the tree. Verse 5, he made haste and came down. So he wanted to see Jesus, and he obeyed Jesus. We also see in verse number 6 that he received him joyfully. Zacchaeus received Jesus joyfully. Have you ever received Jesus as your Savior? 
Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. He obeyed Jesus and he received him. Received him. Have you received him as your Savior? Verse 7. The people complained that Jesus was going to be with someone who was a sinner. You know what? We all need to be glad that Jesus will receive sinners. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Have you ever put yourself in those shoes? That I'm the sinner that Jesus came to save. He came to save me. There was a change with Zacchaeus. In verse 8, he said, Half my goods I give to the poor, and what he wrongfully took he replaced with four times as much. There was proof of a change in his life. We are like Zacchaeus. There's a change that we need. And that change is needed because of our sin. We are born going in the wrong direction. So we need to repent. Repent means to change your mind. A change is needed because of our sin. What is sin? Sin is all of the bad things that we think, say, and do. God calls all of those things sin. That's why we need to repent. We need to change our mind, which will bring a change in action. These things are wrong. Sin. The biggest change that could happen to you is getting saved. Accepting Jesus as your Savior. That would be the biggest change in your life. You will then be on the road to heaven. Has there been a time where you accepted Jesus as your Savior? We need to stop and thank God for sending his son. Have you ever stopped and thanked God for sending his son for dying for your sins? I believe he died for mine. Keep in mind, God sees you. God knows you, even your name. And God loves you. And he sent his son to die for you. God has demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even though we're sinners, Christ died for us. Even though there are things that change in our lives all the time, there's going to be lots of changes. Lots have happened. There's more to come. Change happens. But there are some things that don't change. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, it says, For I am the Lord. I change not. God's word does not change. God's love does not change. God's holiness does not change. His judgment, his goodness, his power, his character, his promises don't change. The way to heaven has not changed. Three things I'd like you to remember when, when it comes to going to heaven. All have sinned. All of us. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We do not meet God's standard, which is perfection. We fall short. All have sinned. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. We are all sinners. However, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. So keep this in mind. Let's just focus on this for a second. All have sinned, which means I'm a sinner. And Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So who did he come to save? And the third thing, whosoever believeth on him, Jesus, should not perish, but have everlasting life. We learn of that in John chapter th uh, 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shall be saved. Change. The way we listen to music has changed. The way we watch movies has changed. Even our money has changed. People change. How we live our daily lives now with COVID has changed. A lot in life is uncertain, and we don't know what the future holds. We don't know what changes are coming. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. 
What's changing next? We don't know. We know what's not changing. God. God's not changing. If you are not saved, our prayer is that there would be a change take place with you. That you would change your mind about sin and understand that my sin is keeping me out of heaven. That you would change your mind about the Savior. Jesus is the one that can take away your sin. We are pointing you to him. Because of Christ's death and resurrection, forgiveness of sins is available to those that trust him. I'll repeat that. Because of Christ's death and resurrection, forgiveness of sins is available to those that trust him. Do you trust him? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And I'll close with sharing the verse that we learned today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Shall we close in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, again, we're thankful for this time that we can spend together sharing thy word, sharing thy kindness, and letting others know that there is one who can forgive sins. We are thankful that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Again, we pray thy blessing upon our Sunday school students, upon their families. We pray for safety as everyone is now uh, back in school, whether it be at home or physically there. We pray for blessing upon each one. We give thanks now for all of these things in the worthy and precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, with that said, for those that are back in school, please be safe. Please be patient. These changes are going to be with us for a little while. So let us be patient as we do these things. Please stay safe. And remember that God loves you and we love you too. So we hope to see you next time. Have a good day.